Um, Jen is going to be talking about internships. We've all probably heard internships, internships, internships ad nauseum. So this is not going to be about why you should have an internship program. Um, this is going to be a real twist, and I don't think that most of us in the room have heard about a kind of internship program and, and an organization like this and how they can run an internship program. So, uh, Jen? Good afternoon. Good morning, I should say to everybody. Um, I'm Jen Bernasconi. I'm the Associate Manager of Strikers University Relations program. Thank you. Um, this presentation is definitely going to be a little bit more tactical because I want to walk you guys through really the, the transition and transformation that we went through as an organization over the last two-ish years. So I always, I, I tell people, and actually before I even started working at Striker, I had never heard of the organization. It's, it's a pretty large organization I think a lot of people haven't heard of. So um, we are about a $9 billion global medical device organization. We have presence in about 100 countries, about 22,000 employees. And in the U.S., we have about 15 different kind of locations um, that are a mix of manufacturing kind of corporate. Um, Fortune 500, 100 best companies to work for, I have to put my plug in there. Um, and we went through, um, about two years ago, kind of a transition from a very decentralized organization. And uh, decentralized in many, many ways, which really helped us to have a tremendous amount of growth of, in success. But in certain areas, we got big enough where we know we needed to leverage. And there's a big area of that was staffing. And we set up a centralized staffing function. And as part of that, we set up a centralized university relations program. For our university relations and our internships, we had um, various levels of buy-in for the program and who did it well and who didn't do it well. Really, every division did it in some capacity, but not every division really executed at the level that we wanted them to. We also went through. Um, a tremendous amount of acquisitions probably in the last five to seven years. So we had 20% growth and then we're continuing to fold in different divisions and locations. So we needed a way to set up staffing and set up universities programs in those new divisions that we've acquired. And then obviously cost. So if you looked at kind of our cost per hire from a university side, it was probably like $19,000 or $20,000. So obviously not super efficient which is another huge driver. So what, oh, actually, did this get changed? I'm going to do, I'm going to go backwards. Um, so prior to the centralization, we had a varied internship experience, OK? We had some divisions that put a lot of time and energy into it. We had some divisions that threw students in and said, hey, go to town. But there was really not a good way to understand what the student experience was. We had um, a very hard time sharing talent. So we could have two divisions, literally, that were probably within five miles of each other that really didn't speak to each other from a talent perspective, which is, doesn't make a heck of a lot of sense. Uh, we didn't have any success metrics, so we didn't know whether this internship program that we're spending money on and time was doing anything for us. Um, and then we had varied levels of um, vision for those divisions on what they thought about early talent and how they were really using it. From a campus side, we had no company brand. We would show up at a campus, there could be Stryker Orthopedics, and two booths down could be Stryker Endoscopy, which obviously is pretty problematic for um, students and, and very, very confusing. Different collateral, different ways we spoke to students, everything was varied. Um, we didn't even really think about how we selected campuses. We kind of said, you know what, uh, this senior leader went to this school, we're going to go there. Or we've always gone to this school, so we're going to go there. So there really wasn't a formality there. And again, we had no success metrics. And then the other thing that was really problematic was we picked people to go to campus with us without a lot of thought, right? So it was like, hey, are you willing to go to ABC campus? Yep, great, OK, come with us. We had no way to really say, like, are they the best people we want to be representing us on campus? I'm actually going to go back. So the first thing we actually did is put the team together. Okay, so we had a push from the business to have a centralized staffing function. So UR was part of that, um, which made the process a little bit easier because we were part of that momentum. We actually picked a leader at that point for university relations who was an existing striker leader. Um, so she had a lot of relationships, a lot of influence. She sat in our corporate headquarters um, because one of the big things that we had to do is market 
this team. We had to say, to get people to understand what the importance was and why you wanted to do it, we had to get people up front. Um, the, uh, the other thing it allowed us to do is fold in those new divisions. So as we had a team that we set up geographically, we have an East Coast, a Central, and a West. Now anytime we have a new acquisition as an organization, that recruiter in that geography will really scoop that division up and um, roll out the intern program in the campuses. Uh, the second thing we did is we identified our campuses. So we put together, honestly, very simple criteria. We knew we couldn't really kind of blow everything up and start from scratch. We wanted to build on what we had, but we want to set some parameters around it. So honestly, what we did is we picked um, geography. Where do those students come from and where do they go to? Um, what alumni population did we have? And then obviously the academic programs for us. Um, the big driver for us is engineering. So when we looked at our schools that we identified, that's the bulk of what we hire in any division. That's really what we looked at the level of their academic program. The second thing we did is it identified, based on that criteria, core campus for all divisions of Stryker. So we have really high level relationships with, right now, two universities. Um, and we will be adding probably one or two more in the next year or so. What these mean, we have very um, high level executives who will attend these camp campuses. We have a lot of investment from a time and a people perspective and a dollars perspective. And then each geography, um, like I mentioned, the East Coast, the Central Region, and the West, picked tier one and tier two campuses that they were going to identify and work closely with. Biggest difference, tier one and tier two, I'm sure you guys are all familiar, is you know, what, what population can we draw from, what's the size of the campus and all of that. Each are equally important to us, but just different levels of relationship. And then the other thing we did is we really educated the business on campus selection. So we went out and said, hey everybody, I know we've always gone to these schools. We are going to now pick these five or six schools that we're going to focus on primarily, which as you can imagine was painful for some people and some divisions. But the message we wanted to send to them is, you know, we used to go to 100 campuses, but we never really had a huge presence or a huge brand on any one campus. So our, our goal at this point is to narrow that pool down and to really go very, very deep in a lot of those campuses. We're actually at an interesting point right now because we're about two years um, in, so this coming year we're going to do a lot of analysis on the campuses that we picked. Because we may, maybe we mismarked, right? Maybe we said this campus based on the criteria had was going to be great. Now we actually have data and metrics to say, yes, this is actually a campus that we should continue to build. And there's probably going to be some movement in the portfolio. What we didn't say to the business though, and I think I covered it in a little bit, is that we didn't say, if you still want to go to ABC school, that's fine. We're not going to tell you no, but we're probably not going to invest um, ourselves to go there. We will help you. We'll educate you on what to do. We'll give you the materials and everything you need, but you will drive that relationship rather than we will drive that relationship. And most people were okay with that. The other thing is we had to message this out to the business, which I referenced earlier. So we had to be conscious of having champions and HR partners and key stakeholders in each of the divisions that were going to believe in what we were trying to do. And that doesn't, it's not just executives, that could be any level, but people who are pretty influential, people who believed in kind of that early talent, people who um, really thought this was the direction that we should go and got those people on board. Um, the other thing that I constantly do is I pepper the message out to anybody who will listen to me. Uh, which is like, this is the right thing to do, this is what we should be doing. And this could be from my actual interns to their managers to their managers' managers and all the way on up, so that the message hopefully is coming from both directions and that people are understanding what we're trying to do. The other thing we did is, I, you know, you allow people to, to be unhappy. So you allow people to share their feelings, you allow people to have, um, discrepancies and opinions for what you're trying to do, and that was okay. We realized to get all of us on the exact same page from the university side is gonna take a little bit of time, but that we can get there, we just, we're not gonna mandate it necessarily across all the regions. And then the other thing is we made sure the team understood the unified goal. 
So, you know, here's what we're tracking towards. It's going to take some time, but we all know what we're tracking towards. I need a, can I have a, my water? To, my <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So, this was the things that we gave a little bit of give and take on, and things where we mandated critical alignment, I called it. So, we changed the collateral and any branding from the presentation you would give at an info session to the actual collateral that's at the table to the giveaways. We made sure anybody hitting a campus representing Stryker looked the same. T-shirts, whatever, you name it. We made sure everybody looked the same as they were hitting the campus. We also made sure the interviewing requirements were the same from the questions to the process. We stuck very hard to that so that students whether you're at Cal Poly or whether you're at Penn State, you're going to have a pretty unified interviewing experience for Stryker. We also made sure the job postings were, you know, the same. They were worded the same. So from a branding perspective, again, students got it. We made sure pay rates. So we had a huge discrepancy in pay rates. We actually had our students in Michigan being paid more than on the coast, which actually, you know, is pretty interesting. Um, so we made sure we have blanket now pay rates for, again, every student across the country. We also have behavioral assessments we use in our hiring process that was consistent now. It was used intermittently um, before. And then we made sure also from that core campus perspective, those were the schools that across the U.S. we were going to invest in and pull people from every division. The things that we didn't really mandate and still are not mandated, um, is you know, when the students are, are in our buildings, we don't mandate what events they have. Um, you know, our West Coast, Northern California interns have a very you know, different experience than our Mawa, New Jersey interns. You know, they go whitewater rafting and they do a lot of, they all live together. It's a very different experience than the East Coast, but that's okay. We're okay with that. Culturally, it's a different environment as well and we are conscious of that. We also don't mandate what we do in schools. So each school is going to require different things. Again, students are going to respond differently. We don't really care what those events are. Most of our recruiters will hit the core things. They will hit the job fairs and the basics. But whatever else you want to do on that campus that you think is valuable is totally fine. Um, the orientation and the onboarding. So we have a fairly consistent orientation. But each one has a little different slant on it, and, and there's different ways we feel that those students get up and running in those buildings, and again, we were okay with that. Um, the local campus relationships we talked about, and then housing. Um, we have our, like I mentioned, their West Coast students. They have um, housing all together. They all live together, where our Michigan is a little different and our East Coast is a little different. And we felt that was okay, and we allowed the businesses to make those decisions. So bumps in the road, um, lessons learned kind of for us is, um, you know, the compensation change was a little painful um, in, in some divisions because this is coming out of the business's budget. So we had to convince them to raise their pay rates fairly significantly and also provide sign-on bonuses and housing stipends, which I still hear about today. Um, people are, still don't get why we would do that. Um, the other thing that, that has been challenging, but we are making good strides, is the um, new acquisitions. So some of the divisions that we've brought in are not culturally similar, I would say. We also don't necessarily have a recruiter who's sitting there, and we don't have a physical presence there all the time. So that can be challenging from an engagement standpoint for the interns. That can be challenging from a campus standpoint where we have a lot of you know, hands-on leverage for the buildings that we sit in. The other thing that, that, and these kind of go together, but um, we have two kind of distinct challenges. We have one large division that still doesn't really understand the value of intern conversion. So it's a division that has the most interns, really believes in bringing students in, but doesn't get that last piece, right? Doesn't get that. We've got to turn these people into full-time talent, which is, <laughs> which is, you know, we do 95% of it very, very well, and that last most critical piece we're struggling at, but we're working on it. And then you've got another division that converts 60 plus percent year over year, but they don't want to do the process stuff, right? Because we've always done it well. We just, we get it, we know how to do it, don't talk to us about doing it differently. So it's kind of very different challenges that you're dealing with. 
Um, and we realize that that's going to be you know, part of the, the process that we go through, and we're continuing to push as we go through. And then if you look at us, so two years in review. So I, we kind of have a little bit of um, you know, middle of the road. We have very, very high student satisfaction and engagement. We have, um, you know, if we do surveys at the end of the, the terms, I think close to 95% of the students say that Stryker is a place they'd want to be. Their satisfaction level with the intern program is very, very high. Um, even students that we don't convert, which is great. Campuses, like I mentioned, you know, we've had some great traction with campuses. We've had some that we've realized that we may need to change and adjust and maybe not as invest as much in. And some that we're going to say, yeah, they're doing tremendous things for us as a company and we're going to invest more. And then the other one is um, response from the business. So it's, I put the up, down, up, down. Um, I would say overall positive. There's definitely a lot of good things the business is seeing. They're actually coming to us, um, asking us to help them with their, either their technology issues and how they can build relationships with campus or, you know, they, they're realizing from a growth perspective they're going to need early talent. And they're, 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 they've gotten the message to get ahead of that. And so they're coming to the university team to say, how can you help us do this? Which is phenomenal. We've still got some businesses that we are working closely with. And we'll making, you know, incremental slides. And hopefully we'll get to a point where everybody is flush. But um, definitely overall positive. Um, and then just quick takeaways, so what I would tell you guys, if, if any of you guys are in a similar situation where you have a very decentralized organization, is you know, do your research. You want to win over leadership and really everybody with data and benchmarking to say, you know, here's what the great companies are doing. Here's what a good program should look like. Here's how we should make it a unified experience across Stryker and why you would want to do that. The other thing is over-communicate, like I mentioned. I mean, really talking, I'm sure people in the building that I work in are sick of hearing me talk. Um, because honestly, I try to butt myself into meetings and get in front of people and try to tell my story all the time. So make sure you're doing that. Um, and then the other way I put for us is really, you know, toe the hard line when you need to. So if you really feel like these changes need to happen, um, you need to hold strong on that, and you need to tell the, the business why. But if there's some things that don't really matter at the end of the day, that you, know, you don't need a very exact process or experience, that's okay. Um, and we've learned you know, that and feel like that that has helped us be successful because we haven't mandated things across the board unless we really, really, really needed to. Um, and that, that'll be different for you know every business, but for us that was a, a win. So thank you. Thank you, Jen. Yeah. And Jen was one of the many people who um, uh, really enjoyed her commute um, into Manhattan today. It, it was it was it was the nicest two it was the nice, <laughs> nicest two hours of your life, right? Uh, yeah, I live in a Rockland, so I'm like, yeah, I just I'm gonna breeze right into the city. Two and a half hours later, I'm on Eleventh Avenue, stuck for like twenty minutes. So. <laughs> but think of all the coffee she I was able to enjoy on the way in, right? <laughs> um, you, you mentioned about um, sort of forcing the, the the towing the line, and um, a hiring manager or actually an, an internship leader at another another large company told me that what she did with that was that she went to the hiring manager. It's like, you know, we have to recruit at XYZ campus because 47 years ago I graduated yes, yeah. from that. You know, it's like, and she was like, okay, let's, let me look at the data. And they went back. How many times have you gone? How much money have you spent? How many people have we yeah. hired and, and did like a cost per hire? And the cost per hire was infinite because they never had hired anybody from that school. And so then she said, you know, I have no problem assigning staff and spending money there, but it's going to come out of your budget, not mine. Mm -hmm. And that was the end of that yeah. desire to go to that campus. Um, so yeah. da found, data, data can be a good thing. I found the campus in my um, role, it's, it's very emotional for people. You know, it's a super emotional feeling of like, why are you not going to my campus? And homecoming's fun, right? right? So, <laughs> so, yeah. Questions? Yes, Stephen, I'll get you the mic. By the way, I really like your name. Stephen is just a wonderful name. <laughs> my mother would agree with you. Get my name, you have a real problem, Steve. <laughs> uh, Jennifer, just a very simple, easy question. Uh, you know, if you're not tier one, tier two, and you get uh, great campus candidates from 
non-tier schools, what are you doing with them and how are you handling that? Yeah, you know, it's, it's not exclusionary. So we, we have these relationships with schools, we want those to be our feeders, but we, we will accept students from any university. And actually, probably in, in New Jersey, we have a program, we have about 95 interns in my region, we probably have 40 <laughs> campuses represented in some fashion. Yep. Hi, good afternoon, good morning. Uh, Jana Kogan from NASDAQ OMX. Um, how do you deal with the uh, issues where a hiring manager has a certain budget allocated, um, uh, headcount budget is what I'm referring to, uh, to him and there's no exceptions and they cannot get any higher than that. And obviously they want uh, experienced folks into... Mm -hmm. So that's been a lot, because the, the, um, the particular division that I support, they, they are very much of, we need a, an experienced person. So one of the messaging that we've tried to say is, you know, when you're doing your talent reviews and thinking about your team growth and who might be moving places and what kind of needs you have, could that need be filled by someone who's an early talent? And it's not an easy message, honestly. It's, it's something that you have to get people to think a little differently. And for some roles, there's no, you have to hire somebody with experience. But what I found in my experience is people just say that because it's easier to say that. And it's easier to interview for, I need five years and two years and this year, than to say, I'm looking for talent. So it's a work in progress, but that's how we've messaged it out as part of the total group. I've had better success also with teams who are a little bigger, who have, you know, maybe some buffer, if it's a team of 10 to, 20 people rather than three people, you have a little bit more buffer to bring in early talent. Um, but yeah, that's how we've done it. Two more questions. Uh, Hi, I'm Mike Conway from the Boston Beer Company. Uh, we are just starting to implement an internship program. Um, and naturally, we're pretty small, uh, very limited resources. What would you recommend as far as a uh, particular grade to target to see return on investment immediately, but also, you know, leveraging the res those relationships to get employee branding on campus, you know, with the younger. So do you mean what, what year you, students? Yeah, would you focus, you know, juniors into yeah. seniors to have that immediate? So you might want to do a mix because you, your conversion probably won't be that high just based on size. So you might want to look at teams that will have potential opportunities sooner and maybe you focus on juniors, rising seniors for that. And then maybe teams that are not going to be growing as quickly, you do you know, rising junior or rising sophomore. It's not always easy to do that, though. I mean, I always tell the teams, like, listen, I'm going to find you the best talent. We usually have a sophomore and above requirement. But um, if you can mix it, it'll give you some opportunities probably to have that conversion than if you have everybody younger or older. OK, now, as, as much as I love EY, like branding-wise, which company has a cooler brand in here? Boston Beer Company or EY? <laughs> <laughs> right? It's like, I don't, it's like I, I don't care what you do on Facebook, Dan. You don't stand a chance. <laughs> Last question. Good morning, Jen. Bruce Saltis with Verizon. Uh, interested uh, to understand from a research perspective, was it a mix of internal and if you tap into external research resources, which did you find to... When we to set, the, set up the program, kind of? Yeah. Um, it was mostly um, the, the leader who was there before she even started doing anything spent like six months just researching. And mostly internal, mostly self-generated. And she did some um, benchmarking with best practice companies, but we didn't engage anybody now. <laughs> All right, so thank you so much. That was awesome.